Welcome to This Day in Baseball. We bring you everything from the thrill of victory to the agony of defeat in every milestone and oddball event in between. Today's game is courtesy of ThisDayInBaseball.com. You can come for a peek, make friends for a lifetime. Before, after, and during the game, check out the links below the video and visit the player pages, parks, and teams as you listen to this blast from the past. You can catch us on every social media platform. And I want to do a special thanks to MLB Classic Radio Archives for this broadcast. Now, let's play ball. Yes, here come the Dodgers. And this is Ben Scully, along with Jerry Doggett and Al Helfer, inviting you to stay with us now as the Dodgers invade County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to play the Milwaukee Braves. All the doings are sent your way with the compliments of the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of America's oldest lager beers, Schaefer. And also with the compliments of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes, on behalf of Lucky Strike, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. The Dodgers and Milwaukee Braves doing their warming up right now as we await the start of this ball game. It'll be the third meeting between the two clubs. The Dodgers and Braves have each won one. We had quite a downpour of rain at about 10 minutes of 7. However, the infield was completely covered by a tarpaulin, and it appears to be in very good shape. The outfield, there are no noticeable puddles. However, I imagine the grass is a bit wet and slippery. The cinder track, which surrounds the entire playing area, both in fair and foul ground, shows many, many puddles, and especially in left field and in right. The groundkeepers right now are trying to push off the water and dry it out as best they can. The Braves had some batting practice, but then the downpour came, so actually neither club had much of a workout, neither club having either infield or batting practice. The pitches for this first of two games, it will be Don Newcomb against Bob Buell. They'll wrap things up tomorrow afternoon. Don Drysdale against Gene Conley. For Don Newcomb, he has two wins and two defeats with the National League. He is making his 200th National League start. Newcomb has completed 101 ball games. Magley, on the other hand, the only other active Dodger pitcher with 200 starts, and he's completed 87. Newcomb has been a very winning pitcher, especially on the road away from Ebbets Field. He has a 12-game winning streak on the road. He's picked up one this year, and 11 in 1956. And actually has not lost a road game since June of last year, early when he lost a 5-4 complete game to the Chicago Cubs. Newcomb with his 2-2 two and two record. Last year against the Milwaukee Braves was 2-1 and one, and lifetime 10 wins and 8 defeats. For Milwaukee's Bob Buell, he is 1-1 one and one this year. Last year, he had 8 wins and only 1 defeat against Brooklyn. He really racked them around. And lifetime 11 wins and 6 defeats. Buell pitched 4 complete game victories and 4 starts against the Dodgers at Milwaukee in 56. He likes to pitch in this spacious ballpark. And he allowed only 4 runs in 36 innings. He started against the Dodgers at Brooklyn this year, if you remember, allowing five runs, four of them earned, and five hits, and he could only get two men out on the first inning before he left. He's made three incomplete starts this season and relieved one. The starting lineup for the visiting Dodgers, Jim Gilliam opens up at second base. Pee Wee Reese at shortstop. Duke Snyder hitting third in center field. Carl Perillo in the cleanup spot in right. Gil Hodges at first base. Sandy Amaros will be in left field. Gino Simoli would most probably have started, except in the Giants series, and I'm sure you're well aware of it. Besides the troubled right ankle, he then pulled a muscle back of his left leg. And the word from Doc Wendler and from Walter Austin is that Simoli will probably be out for a week. And there is even a question as to whether he will appear at all while the Dodgers are on this first Western trip. So Sandy Amaros in left field, batting six. Roy Campanella will be the catcher. Don Zimmer at third base. And Don Newcomb, the pitcher. For the Milwaukee Braves, riding high, they are tied at first place with the red-hot Cincinnati Redlegs, who have won 12 straight. Danny O'Connell leads off at second base. Henry Aaron, the mighty Henry Aaron, will bat second in right field. Eddie Matthews will be at third base, hitting third in the lineup. Joe Adcock, always a Dodger nemesis, though not as much out here as he is back at Ebbets Field. Remember, Adcock hit 13 home runs against Brooklyn last year. Adcock in the cleanup spot at first base. There's been quite a jigsaw puzzle going out in left field for Milwaukee. First Bobby Thompson, then Wes Covington, and now Chuck Tanner, who's been going fairly well. Not hitting for the average, but the report is he's been hitting the ball right on the button. So Chuck Tanner, a left-hand batter, will get a start in left field tonight. Johnny Logan will be the shortstop, hitting six. Bill Bruton in center field, batting seven. 
Del Rice will be the catcher to handle Bob Buell. And as we said, Buell batting ninth for pitchers. The Milwaukee Braves have now taken the field. The pregame discussion continues at home plate. The four umpires, Chad Crawford will be the plate umpire. Tony Venzen on the line at first. Lee Ballantyne, the senior umpire of the quartet, will be umpiring at second. And Bill Joukowsky around at third. To set the Braves defensively, Bob Buell on the mound and Del Rice is catcher. At first base, Joe Adcock. At second, Danny O'Connell. Shortstop, Johnny Logan. And the third baseman, Eddie Matthews. And now the large crowd standing here at County Stadium for our national anthem. <laughs> Stadium in Milwaukee to see a large crowd somewhere between 35 and 40,000 standing and singing out loud and clear our national anthem. It's a great thing. I sure wish we could do it back in Brooklyn. Well, Bob Buell loosening up with Del Rice. We already filled you in on the infield for the Braves. The outfield, Chuck Tanner, will be in left field. So Bobby Thompson and Wes Covington right now will ride the bench. And, of course, the Braves have a cutdown problem. They'll have to cut down two men. They have 27. So by Wednesday night, two faces will be gone from the Milwaukee scene. Tanner in left field. In center, Bill Bruton. And around and right, talking about faces on the Milwaukee scene, one that should be here a long, long time, Mr. Henry Allen. Well, Bob Buell getting used to the mound as he throws down to Del Rice. Jim Gilliam swings a few bats and ready to come up. Gilliam, you know, was the leading Dodger hitter in the West last year. He had a 3.33 average. Although Gilliam has been in a slump of late, they hope that as leadoff man on his first Western trip, he can break Brooklyn going. The Dodgers, as of this moment, trail in second place by two and a half games. The Up and M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, delighted to be sending it to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Dodgers and Braves in the first of two games. And now for the play-by-play for Schaefer, here's Jerry Doggett. Thanks, Ben, and hi, everyone. Set to play ball here at Milwaukee tonight. Jim Gilliam steps in, swinging a bat, and Bob Buell turns around and looks at the outfield and is about set to come down with a first pitch. Defensively for Milwaukee, Matthews, Logan, O'Connell, and Adcock on the infield. Tanner in left, Bruton in center, and Aaron in right field. Rice catching, and Bob Buell now still looking out to the left side to see if Chuck Tanner is ready in left field. Tanner moving in a step or two, and Buell still waiting. Puddles of water at the extreme... Uh, fence in left field at the 355-foot mark, and here's the first pitch of the ball game, a high curveball, and it's ball one. And I don't think Gilliam was ready for that one. Jim was standing there waiting for Buell to get set, and Buell just wheeled all of a sudden and fired it down. The wind-up next pitch is in for strike, and the count evens at one and one. A near-capacity crowd at County Stadium in Milwaukee, and now Gilliam walks out. Jim not ready, as Buell apparently quick pitched him on the first pitch. Buell with a decoy looking out toward left, just wheeled around and then fired to the plate. So Gilliam waits with a 1-1 count. Buell into the windup, and here's the next one. Curveball fell to the right field for a base hit. Over to play it as Aaron cuts it off, and Gilliam now is on at first base with a single lined in the right field. So the Dodgers have a base runner as Gilliam gets a base hit. And up now will be Captain Pee Wee Reese. Reese hitting at 240, Gilliam hitting at 257. Pee Wee Reese coming on with Duke Snyder to follow and then Carl Thrillo. First game on the Western trip for the Dodgers. Reese waiting. Matthews at third, playing up even with the bag, and two steps off the line. 
Braves on the infield of a plate up and see we punch it up the third baseline. Buell over to make the play. It'll go to first base in time there and on the play, Gilliam takes second. The put out is scored from Buell to the first baseman, Joe Adcock. So we have one gone on the sacrifice and it's second base, Jim Gilliam. Up now will be Duke Snyder. Duke hitting 265, has four home runs and 10 runs batted in. So Snyder coming on with one out and a runner at second base, Jim Gilliam. Big Duke in swinging that bat. Buell ready delivers a fastball, a high pop fly into center field. Gruden wandering around now moves in a step, waits under it, and has it for the out. Snyder out on a high fly ball, pops into straightaway center field. So two up and two down following the base hit by Gilliam, and oncoming now will be Carl Farrell. Carl is hitting 273, he has 20 runs batted in to lead the club in that department. Billy Herman in the third base coaching lines and Jake Fittler on the first base side. The Dodgers and Braves, of course, put a two-game set in Brooklyn. And so they start off here, a two-game series, all even on the year. The Braves in a tie for the league lead with Cincinnati, and the Dodgers are two and a half games away in third. Deals delivery, and Ferrillo takes strike. Fastball around the knees on the outside corner. Strike one on Kyle Ferrillo. Waiting. Gilliam off second base. And Buell now out of a stretch again. Checks the runner and delivers. A swing and a drive to left center field. Bruton coming on, and he's there to make the grab for the out and the tie of the side. Brillo landing one to left center, and Bruton raced in quickly to make the play. So it's no runs on one base hit. No errors and one man left on. The Dodgers are out in the top half of the first inning, and at the end of a half inning of play, it's no score. Brooklyn nothing, and Milwaukee coming to back. Now a rundown on the Schaefer scoreboard, and here's Vince Kelly. Well, to repeat now, the Pirates defeated the Chicago Cubs 8-6. Arroyo in relief won it and dropped the starter lost it. Home runs by Foyles and Thomas for the Pirates. Long, Neiman, and Bolger for Chicago. Pirates 8, Chicago 6. The Giants and Cardinals due to get underway soon. Gomez against Mizell, but no report. Philadelphia at Cincinnati. Cardwell against Hacker, and no report there. In the American League, the Tigers shut out the Red Sox 2-0. Mars beat Sullivan, relieved by DeLock in the ninth inning. Bertoy hit a home run for the Tigers. Final score, Detroit 2, Boston nothing. Kansas City and the Yankees, postponed on account of rain. Chicago at Washington, Donovan against Pasquale, no score at the end of an inning and a half. Cleveland and Baltimore, Garcia against Lowe's, 1-0 in favor of Baltimore at the end of an inning and a half. So those are all the scores on our Schaefer scoreboard. Braves coming up now against the Dodgers and Don Newcomb, and let's get right back to Jerry. It'll be Danny O'Connell lead it off there for Milwaukee with Hank Aaron to follow and then Eddie Matthews. O'Connell is hitting 260 on the area. 26 hits and 100 at bat. One home run and seven runs batted in. Nice round of applause for him here. The Braves opening up a long home stand now against uh, the Eastern Clubs. Don Newcomb, 2-2 on the year, will be the starting pitcher for the Dodgers here tonight, trying to make it his third win of the year. Don making his 200th National League start. He has pitched 101 complete games in his first 199 start. Lines and fires. First pitch curved on the corner for a call, strike one. Strike one count. Danny O'Connell, the batter, with Hank Aaron to follow, and then Eddie Matthews. score, bottom half of the first inning. Newcomb into the windup, and here's his pitch. A bouncer out to the left side. Reese comes in for a big hop. Play across to Hodges. In time for the out. It's one away. O'Connell bouncing out. Reese to Hodges. One up, one down, and the batter will be Hank Aaron. Henry hitting 379. Leads the league and runs batted in and in home runs and in base hit. A tremendous ovation for Henry Aaron, a real favorite here at Milwaukee. And a near-capacity crowd of 40,000 plus in the county stadium. And as Vinny explained a little earlier, the rain shower we had an hour or so ago might have kept a few folks away. Swing the drive to center, base hit. Snyder waits for the hop and fires it back in, and Aaron is on with a single line to center. So Henry Aaron collects his 40th base hit of the year. Single to center, and the base hits in the ball game are even now as Eddie Matthews comes on. Eddie hitting 297, has five homers and 17 runs batted in. Left hand batter. Field shades him around to the right now, and the Dodger infield plays a double play depth. Zimmer, Reese, Gilliam, and Hodges on the infield. Amaros in left, Snyder in center, and Perillo in right. Campy down to give a sign, and Big Don out of a stretch. The look's in the pitch. Swung on as he changed up beautifully. 
Matthew is swinging quite a bit before the pitch got in there. As Big Don pulled the string and broke one off very nicely. One out, one on, no score, first inning. The Dodgers and the Braves from County Stadium, Milwaukee. We'll have a day game tomorrow. Our time is 2.25 over the same station. The Dodgers and Milwaukee right here at County Stadium tomorrow. And it'll be Ladies' Day here. The pitch to Matthews. Fastball high, pop fly around the second base area. Gilliam back on the edge of the grass now. Waits and backs into right field. Two steps and makes the play for the out. So Matthews pops up to Gilliam just off the grass in center field. Here now is Joe Adcock, the big first baseman, hitting 337. Big Joe has six home runs and 17 runs batted in. Adcock the batter. The only vacant seats visible to us are scattered throughout the outfield bleachers in left hand and right. Two outs, one on, and Newcomb's pitch finds the outside corner. Strike one on Adcock. Chuck Tanner is on deck with Johnny Logan to follow. No score. First inning. Each side with a base hit. Henry Aaron, the base runner for Milwaukee. Jim Gilliam got on for the Dodgers. John Newcomb against Bob Buell. Strike one pitch to Adcock. On the way. Change up. It's a little low and it's ball one. Even count now. One and one. One ball. One strike to Joe Adcock. Schaefer Bear delighted to send it all to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Count. Duke him out of a stretch again. Eyes in over his shoulder. Delivers. Swing and a drive to right field. Slice along the line. And this is going to be trouble. Into a base hit. One hop to the wall. Throw it over the plate. Aaron rounds third. Heads home. And Gillis go to the plate. Will not be in time. Hatchcock goes to third. And Milwaukee leads one nothing. Heading to the opposite field, down the right field line. Slice it in for a three-bagger, and the Braves take the lead, 1-0, in the first inning. A triple for Adcock, and the run batted in as Hank Aaron scores easily. The batter now, Chuck Tanner. Left-hand hitting left fielder. Newcomb's pitch is outside for ball one. Tanner has five hits, 26 trips for a 192 percentage. The Braves out in front, one to nothing, on a single by Aaron and a free bagger by Adcock. It's just inside the right field line. The ball rolled all the way to the barrier, 320 feet. And to the outfield, shifted to the left fielder, had a long way to go to retrieve. Ball one count on Tanner. Newcomb's delivery. Curveball that's in for strike, and it's one and one. Runner at third, Joe Adcock. Milwaukee one, Dodgers nothing. First inning, and there are two outs and one on at third. Tanner wearing number 18 on the back of the white uniform. Big nuke into the windup, and down it comes. Curveball tapped up the first baseline. Coming forward is Newcom. Play to first. It's not in time. The ball gets away from Hodges, and the run scores. The base hit for Tanner. Tops up the first baseline. Newcomb went over to make the play. And when he threw down the line, he threw too close to the runner. The ball deflected off the runner. Bounced away from Hodges a few feet. Adcock scored on the play, and Tanner is on first with an infield hit. Two to nothing, Milwaukee leads. And up now will be Johnny Logan. The third hit in the inning off Newcomb. On first, Chuck Tanner with an infield hit. Logan waits, and Newcomb's pitch is outside high for ball one. Newcomb made the play on the ball all right, but he was right on the foul line when he retrieved, and he threw down the line, and his ball, the ball might have deflected off the arm of the runner and bounced away from Hodges, and Tanner drew life on a base hit. Logan waits. Here's the pitch. High foul off to the right out of play. This will come down in the stands behind first, and it's ball one, strike one on Johnny Logan. Milwaukee two and the Dodgers nothing. First inning. Aaron singled with one out, and after Matthews popped up, Adcock tripled to right 
and Tanner got a roller on the first baseline for another run in the base set. The one one look in the pitch to Logan. Curveball popped up in the short right field. Coming in is Perillo, going out is Gilliam. Perillo calls and makes the grab for the out to retire the side. So Logan skies to right, and that's all for Milwaukee in the first. Two runs picked up. Three base hits, no errors, one man left. So at the end of one inning of play, the score Milwaukee two, the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. And now with a word here, Tim Skelly. Well, you know, friends, some words are mighty hard to define. Let's take the word enjoyment, for instance. Now, I guess the best way to describe enjoyment is by talking about Schaefer beer. Yes, sir, when you look at a tall, golden amber glass of Schaefer, crowned by a snowy white collar of foam, well, friends, you're seeing enjoyment. And when you lift up the glass and take a good long whiff of that delicate fragrance, well, you're smelling enjoyment. And then when you put that cool Schaefer to your lips, friends, you're tasting enjoyment. No maybes about it. Schaefer beer gives you the light, snappy flavor you want, but don't always find. Because Schaefer is brewed only of rich barley malt, tangy hops, and other fine natural ingredients. So no use trying to describe enjoyment. Have it in Schaefer beer. Friends, it's real beer. Boy, it's fine. End of one inning, the Milwaukee Braves two and the Brooklyn Dodgers nothing. As Don Newcomb is roughed up for three base hits, one of them a triple. And now to the second inning, Gil Hodges coming up and right back to Jerry. Hodges starting it off for the Dodgers now in the second inning. And Gil is hitting at 318, 28 base hits, 88 trips to the plate. His average and that of Gino Simoli identical. Gino, of course, not playing and will possibly be out for the entire trip, although he hopes to get back in possibly in St. Louis. But right now, Doc Wendler is not too optimistic. Hodge is stepping in. We're in the second inning, and the Braves now lead 2 nothing. Bob Buell, stout right-hander on the mound, into the lineup, and the pitch to Gill is low and outside, ball one. Hodge is with 28 for 88 and four home runs and 14 runs batted in. Milwaukee 2, Dodgers nothing. And Gill takes the curveball up high and outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. a fastball for a strike and the count is 2-1. Buell last year pitched four complete games in victories and four strikes against the Dodgers at Milwaukee, allowing only four runs in 36 innings. 2-1 pitch. Buell swings a bounding ball to the right side. O'Connell comes up for the bounce, makes his play to first in time for the out. One away. Hodges out by a step and a half, one up, one down, and on coming now will be Sandy Amaros. Sandy hitting 333. Roy Campanella on deck and Don Zimmer to follow. Buell started against the Dodgers at Brooklyn this year, allowing five runs, four in, and five hits in two-thirds of an inning to no decision. He has made three incomplete starts this season and has relieved once. Here's a pitch to skip by the catcher, Dell Rice, all the way back to the backstop, and it's ball one on Amaral. Buell's record for the year is one win, one loss. Bob's been off to a rather slow start this year. One out, none on. Dodgers batting in the top of the second. Milwaukee picks up two in the bottom of the first and lead two to nothing. Buell winds, Amaro waits and takes low and inside with the curve and it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes to Sandy Amaro. Roy Campanella off in the on-deck circle down to the left, waiting for his turn next. Buell's pitch, high, ball three, fastball came in too high around the bill of the cap. Three nothing cap now on Sandy Amaro. Sandy has 5 for 15, and he takes a strike now, and it's 3 and 1. Buell pitching without a windup that time. Now comes to the top and fires again, and Sandy takes another one for strike two. Full count, 3 and 2 on Sandy Amaros. Buell winds and fires. Sandy swings and fouls it back straight away. Count stays at 3 2. And plate umpire Crawford fires a new one out to Bob Buell. Crawford, Benzone, Valentin, and Jakowski working this one here this evening. 3 2 count on Amaros. One out, none on. Second inning. Buell checks the sign from Del Rice, shakes it off, and gets a new one. Now shakes it off and asks for another one. 3 2 pitch on the way. Sandy swings at the high pop foul on the first baseline. Adcock may have a play going down toward the box seats and can't get it. It's out of play back in the stands. 
Adcock, O'Connell, and Aaron all followed the ball, but it sailed away out of play. So the count to Amaros holds up a three and two, and now, defensively, Adcock back to first, O'Connell back to second, Aaron moving back into right field. They play Amaros a slight bit to the right, playing to pull. Adcock deep on the first baseline. O'Connell playing about halfway, and he's back on the edge of the grass. 3-2 pitch again. Ball four in around the knees, and Amaros is on with a walk. So off Bob Buell, base on balls number one, the second Dodger runner of the game. And up now will be Roy Campanella. Campy has four homers, 15 runs batted in, and is hitting 275. Campanella, right-hand batter against Bob Buell, right-hand pitcher. Top of the second. Schaefer Bear, happy to send it all to you this fine evening from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Campy looks at a curveball that's down low, ball one. Hope you're enjoying the ball game and also a cool, refreshing Schaefer along about now. Campy waits. Pitch swung on a high pop fly in left center field. Going out is Logan, coming on is Bruton. Tanner coming on. Tanner calls and runs Bruton off the play and makes the catch for the out. The Campanella flies out to Chuck Tanner in short left center. Two down now, and Don Zimmer coming on, hitting 273. Don has 24 base hits, three homers, and nine runs batted in. Zimmer up, Don Newcomb on deck. Runner at first base, Sandy Amaros. Dodgers batting in the second, and Milwaukee leads two to nothing. Checked by Buell and the pitch to the plate. Zimmer takes it low and outside with a fastball, ball one. Forty thousand on hand for the game tonight. Curveball breaks down and away, and it's ball two on Zimmer. Two balls, no strikes. Top of the second inning. Steel checks with Dell Rice again. Looks at first to Amaros. Zimmer swings and it's one foul back in the upper deck behind home plate, and it's two balls, one strike. We have a fine seat here at County Stadium on the mezzanine right behind home plate. Two balls, one strike. Don Zimmer waiting. Outfield swung to the left. It plays Zimmer definitely to pull. The hole for him is in right center. 2-1 look by Buell to pitch. Swung on and missed strike two as Zim had a big check going after a Buell fastball. 2-2 two, two count. The infield bone dry, covered by a huge tarp. A little wet around the edges. 2-2 pitch. Zimmer swings and belts one to left field. Tanner coming on fast and makes the grab for the out. Zimmer hit it right on the nose, but a line drive straight to Tanner who raced in several steps and hauled it down and the side is retired. For the Dodgers, no runs, no hits, no errors, and they left the man. And so at the end of the top half of the second, an English score. Milwaukee two and Brooklyn nothing. Now fans away from Ben Scully. Well, you know, one of the handy things about the Schaefer six-pack is that they're so easy to spot in the store. You just look for scenes of folks doing the things folks do. Fishing, having a picnic, working in the shop, watching TV, enjoying a glass of Schaefer beer in each of these situations. Now, those are the pictures right on the sides of the Schaefer six-pack. Pictures of enjoyment, real enjoyment. And naturally, they go hand-in-hand hand with what's inside the Schaefer six-pack. The real beer flavor that gives you so much enjoyment. So when you stop by the store, pick up a Schaefer six-pack or two. Just look for the white background and the pictures of young folks enjoying themselves. Friends, you'll enjoy Schaefer yourself. It's real beer. And while you're having a cold glass of Schaefer, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. And dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station, downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. It's now 9.30 WOKO time. Here's Bill Bruton stepping in now as we go to play on the second, and Don Newcomb into the windup. Down comes the first pitch. Swung on a pop fly on the left side. Backing up for it is Reese to the edge of the grass, out in the center field now, and about three or four steps to make the play for the out. So Bruton pops up to Reese in short left center. One away, and the catcher, Daryl Rice, coming on. Rice hitting it even 250 on the year, has one for four. Playing tonight to give uh, catcher Dell Crandall a bit of a rest. Dell Rice, number seven, walking up to the plate, right hand hitter. One out, none on, second inning. Milwaukee two, and the Dodgers nothing. Two 
took him into the windup, and here's his pitch. Fastball, a little high. It's ball one. One ball, no strikes on Del Wright. Bob Buell is due next. In the on-deck circle is Danny O'Connell, the leadoff batter. One out, none on. Bottom of the second. Big nuke into the windup, and down it comes. Curveball is in for a strike, and it's one and one. One game played this afternoon in the National League. Pittsburgh beat Chicago 8-6. to six. Nuke ready. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Change up. Pops down the left side. Down the line goes Don Zimmer waving his hands now as he crosses into foul territory and makes the grab for the out, and he almost lost it. Zim almost slipped as he got out there and almost dropped the ball, juggled it momentarily, made a quick, fast grab at it, and had it. So fouling out is Del Rice, two away, and the batter coming on will be Bob Buell. Two up, two down on top flies. Root and pop to Reese in short center, and Rice fouls out to Zimmer down the left field line. The hand is for Buell as he comes on. Bob Buell, right-hand batter, number 10 on the back of the white uniform. Now Newcomb checks his sign, goes into the windup, and down it comes. Pop fly on the first base side foul. Hodges has room, comes out past the coach box, waits, and makes the grab for the outside retired. So a quick inning for Don Newcomb as he gets some one, two, three. Pop flies by Bruton, Rice, and Buell. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. The end of two, the score in the ball game. Milwaukee two, the Dodgers nothing. Now again, here's Ben. Well, you know, if a young man is facing military service one of these days soon, I imagine you probably do. Do you know one of them? Well, listen, you'd be smart to get hold of a booklet called It's Your Choice and learn all about the 30 different volunteer programs you can go into. that give you special options not offered by the draft. For instance, if you're eligible, you can complete all your active duty in six months or get a college education. Good idea to choose the service and the program that suits you best. For a copy of the booklet called It's Your Choice, write to It's Your Choice, Washington 25, D.C. So one of you folks who might be facing military service one of these days, why not do that for a copy of the booklet called It's Your Choice, Washington 25, D.C. Find out if you're eligible about those special options. The end of two innings of play, the Milwaukee Braves are leading the Brooklyn Dodgers two to nothing. Don Newcomb against Bob Buell, and Mr. Newcomb will be first up to lead the parade here in the third, so let's go right back to Jerry. Don Newcomb coming on. Big Don has five hits, 15 trips for the year, a 333 average, been used several times as a pinch batter. No home runs, and he's knocked in four runs. Batting left against Bob Buell. The windup in the first pitch. Swung on and ripped foul right back to the net. And it is strike one. <laughs> Our Milwaukee broadcasting buddies, Wayne Walsh and Earl Gillespie, sitting here with a big uh, fishing net as those balls roll up the screen and Blaine leaned out that time and uh, snared that was we've got a baseball souvenir. <laughs> There's a swing of a long fly ball to left field. Drifting back forward to Turner. Back to the edge of the track now and makes the grab for the up. Newcomb flies out deep to left field. One up and one down. Well, these Milwaukee fellas have a pretty good racket sitting here snaring the ball. One out. Jim Gilliam coming on. Got a base hit to right field first time up. Jim hitting 257 at the start of tonight's play. Buell delivers, and Jim leans back from the high one, and it's ball one. Third inning, Milwaukee leads 2-0 on a pair of runs picked up in the first, a single by Aaron, a triple by Matt, uh, by Adcock, and a single by Tanner. Buell's next pitch is low, and it's ball two now to Jim Gilliam. One out, none on. Reese on deck and Snyder to follow. Two balls, no strike. Last ball is in for a strike, and it's 2-1 to Jim Gilliam. Junior steps out a minute, now back in again. Two and one. Deal ready, winds and fires. A bunt try, fouled off. Gilliam trying to go for a bunt. Fouled it off behind the plate, and the count evens at 2 2. Two two count. Deal now, rubs it up. 
some of the shine off of it, ready to come again to Jim Gilliam. They play Gilliam about straight away. Matthews the third, up a step or two, and the step wide of the line. Fastball comes low, and it's free to. Dale Rice started to fire that one around, thought he might have had a call strike. But a full count is set on Jim Gilliam. Dodger leadoff batter. Steals delivery is turned on and fouls straight back, and the count still three and two. Ball hit the screen and rolls back to the batter's box. Picked up there by umpire Shag Crawford. Three and two of the count. One out. Newcomb fly deep to left field. Steals delivers. And Gilliam swings and lifts, uh, hits one out towards short. One hop to Logan up with it to play across. It's in time for the out. And it's two gone as Gilliam hits the one hopper to Johnny Logan. Two up, two down, and here's Pee Wee Reese coming on. Pee Wee hitting 240. Sacrificed his first time up and got Gilliam into second base. So Reese, 0 for 0, 6 hits, 25 tries before tonight's game. Still delivers a curveball to 10 for strike one, and Reese is set to burn, and Matthews team charging down the line from third. Strike one count on Pee Wee. Still delivers again, a curveball down and out, ball one. Even up now, 1-1. One, one. Two outs, then on. Dodgers batting in the third, and the Braves lead two to nothing. Curveball down low, and it's ball two. Two and one now. Philadelphia leads Cincinnati 3-2 at the end of one inning. St. Louis leads the Giants 1-0 at the end of one. Buell ready with a 2-1 pitch to Reese. Blowing inside, ball free, and it's 3-1 now to the Dodger captain. Pittsburgh beats Chicago this afternoon 8-6. to six. Three-one count, Pee Wee waiting, Snyder on deck. Buell into the windup, and here it is. Up high for a ball four, and Reese is on with a walk. The second base on ball is given up by Bob Buell. So with two outs, Reese strolls, and up now will be Duke Snyder, who fly to center first time up. Duke hitting 265. Infield defense moves around to the right, outfield and slightly to the right against Snyder. Two outs, one on. Reese moves off first. Buell again out of a stretch. Check. And the pitch is high and outside, ball one. Reese bluffed going, and Bell Rice cocked his arm and held up. One ball, no strike to Snyder. Braves two, Dodgers nothing, top of the third. New six. Curveball has swung on a miss as he changed up that time and got Snyder swinging. One and one to Duke. Fine turnout tonight here at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Out of around 40,000. 1 1 left. The pitch swung on a high pop foul off to the left side, and this one's drifting back and into the stands out of play. One ball, two strikes on Duke Snyder. Same clubs tomorrow afternoon. Airtime will be 2.25 Eastern Daylight Time. Milwaukee, the Dodgers go to Chicago for three, St. Louis for two, and Cincinnati for two. Back home on May the 23rd for the Mayor's Trophy game against the Yankees at Ebbets Field. Then the Giants on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That'll be a week hence. One and two count to Snyder. Buell sets and delivers. Two swings and this is strike three. Going for a Buell fastball is out on strike to retire the side. So for the Dodgers in the third inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and they left one. And the score at the end of the top of the third, Milwaukee two, and the Dodgers have none. Hey, then, let's talk about insurance, shall we? Insurance? Say, wait a minute, what about Chase of Beer? Oh, that's what I am talking about. How you can insure yourself against disappointment by buying Schaefer beer in handy refrigerator-sized quarts. Ah, 
I get the message. Have it up on hand. Get the Schaefer Quartz. 32 ounces of gold and amber goodness. Four full glasses of foamy-headed, throat-soothing brew. You're so right, Vince. You see, the Schaefer beer really goes, especially weekends when friends drop by to visit. Sure, everybody loves Schaefer's light and lively flavors. And, brother, when you reach into the refrigerator to fill those empty glasses, you want to make sure something's there. So why not pick up a few Schaefer Quartz tonight to have on hand? It's the best insurance you can have for real enjoyment. And this is your tour of real enjoyment with Schaefer. It's real beer. Well, the Milwaukee Braves, back of Bob Buell, breezing along 2 nothing as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Don Newcomb will be facing Danny O'Connell first up, and here's Jerry. O'Connell first time grounded out to Reese. Aaron to follow, and Matthews after that. The Braves got three hits and two runs in the first inning. Aaron singled with one out. And after Matthews popped out, Adcock tripled down the right field line, scoring Aaron, and then Adcock scored as Tanner beat out a roller up the first base side. Newcomb's first pitch. O'Connell takes it low with a curve, and it's ball one. Last half of the third. Braves two, and the Dodgers nothing. Braves in a flat-footed tie with Cincinnati for the league lead. The Red Legs have won 12 straight. Curve is in for a strike, and it's one and one now to Danny O'Connell. O'Connell, Aaron, and Matthews, the first three for Milwaukee. Danny wearing number four on the back of the white uniform. Big nuke into the windup, and down it comes. Curve is a low and outside for ball two. Two one now on Danny O'Connell. The Dodgers had a losing season last year at Milwaukee, four and seven after three winning years in 53, 54, and 55. Two one pitch. O'Connell looks at it for a strike two as Newt pulled the swing a bit and got it in on the inside corner. 2 2 count on Danny O'Connell hitting 260 for Milwaukee. Two and two. O'Connell waits and Newt goes into the windup. Curveball tapped up third. Zimmer coming fast for it. One hand just way to first. Not in time. O'Connell beats it out. Set number four for Milwaukee as Danny O'Connell hit the slow roller up the third base side and Don Zimmer made a fine play on the ball, but it was not in time. O'Connell on with the base hit, the fourth off Nuke and the second of the infield variety. And here's Henry Aaron coming on. Aaron leads the league in several categories, including hits, home runs, runs scored, and runs batted in. And he's hitting 379. One on and out, Nuke him into the stretch. Curveball, top foul up the first base line, and it's strike one. Duke pulled the string on him on the first pitch, and he fouled it away. O'Connell on at first with men out here in the third. Milwaukee leads two to nothing. Duke ready again, checks on at first base. Now delivers to Aaron, a swing and a high fly ball, foul down the left field line. Zimmer giving it a try, but this one is about five rows back into the box feet. So it is strike two on Aaron. Zimmer and Reese giving it a try. Ambrose came over from left field, but had no chance to get to it. Strike two count. bat, third inning. O'Connell off first. Nukem out of a stretch. Here's the pitch. Rolling away with a fastball. It's ball one, strike two to Aaron. One and two. Schaefer very happy to send it to you this fine evening from County City, Milwaukee. First uh, game of the road trip as the Dodgers head west to swing around through the four towns in the western half of the league. The one-two look and the pitch to Aaron. Swung on a drive in the right center field. Maybe trouble. Throw a long way to go and make the backhand grab for the out. Great play by Perillo. Carl oh, Perillo cut across in the right center field at the edge of the running track in front of the 394 foot mark and hauled her down to beat Aaron out of the extra base hit. And possibly cut off another Milwaukee run. 
Fine play by Frillo. O'Connell back at first base with one out now as Eddie Matthews comes on. The Dodger outfield has certainly made some brilliant plays in the last several ball games. Newcomb delivers to Matthews. Curveball up high. Ball one. In the series at the Polo Grounds, there were several sparkling catches. And now Furlow pulls one out of the hat here this evening. Matthews waiting. Then field around to the right and double play depth. One out, one on. Here's the pitch. High pop foul on the first baseline. I just may have room now. It's just over toward the box seat. And makes the catch for the out. Hodge is about 10 feet away from the stands. Grabs in Matthews' foul ball. So we have two away now with Joe Adcock coming up. Adcock tripled to right. Drove in a run and then scored a run in the first inning. So with two down. Adcock comes on and the runner at first base, Danny O'Connell. Big Joe waits. Hitting 337. Newcomb out of a stretch. Here's the pitch. Change up curveball as it fouled in the upper deck off first base side. Newcomb with a stretch again. Here's the pitch. Swing on a high fly ball to right field deep. Back forward goes Frillo. Back back near the wall. And he waits. He's got it for the out. Retire the side. That's Jack. Slicing another one to right field. This is playable and all down by Frillo on the running track near the sign that says 355. So that's all in the third inning with no runs on one base hit. No errors and one man left on. The Braves out in the third, and at the end of three innings to play the score, Milwaukee two, and the Dodgers have nothing. And now let's turn in uh, Ben and the Shaper scoreboard, all the scores. Ben? Well, the Pirates defeated the Chicago Cubs 8-6 to today. Arroyo in relief won it, and Drott lost it. Home runs by Foyles and Thomas for Pittsburgh. Long, Neiman, and Bolger for Chicago. The Giants and the Cardinals, Gomez against Mizell. Two to nothing in favor of the Cardinals at the end of three innings. Alvin Dark hit a home run in the third with nobody on. We now have a report that Hank Sauer hit a home run in the fourth inning with nobody on for the Giants. So the Cardinal lead is now two to one with the Giants still batting in the fourth inning. The Phillies in Cincinnati at the end of two innings. Philadelphia three and the Red Legs two. Cardwell for the Phillies. Hackers started Fowler in the first inning for Cincinnati. Detroit shut out the Red Sox 2 to nothing back of Duke Moss, who's now 5-1. and one. Frank Sullivan lost it, relieved by DeLock in the ninth inning. Bertoia at home run in the seventh with nobody on for Detroit. Kansas City and the Yankees postponed on account of rain. Chicago at Washington postponed on account of rain. Cleveland at Baltimore, time called because of rain at the end of an inning and a half. Baltimore won, Cleveland nothing, and it's held up because of the rain. And raining all over the place. We had quite a shower before tonight's ball game, and we're hoping to get it right in. All right, Carl Perillo coming up in the fourth inning. Two nothing Milwaukee, and here's Jerry. Perillo received a nice round of applause for that fine running catch he made a while ago on Hank Aaron. First pitch to him is a strike curved on the outside corner. Carl fired out his first time, but it's hitting 273. Braves two, and the Dodgers now nothing, batting in the fourth. Breaking ball is down and low, and it's ball one and strike one on Perillo. Gil Hodges on deck, and Sandy Amaros down in the hole. Newell into the windup and delivers to Perillo. Curveball belted back to the middle into center field for a base hit. Into play it is Bruton, and Perillo is on with a single. That is base hit number two for Brooklyn in the night game. And up now, Gil Hodges grounded out the second his first time up. Gil hitting 318. Braves got two in the first inning on a single by Aaron, a free bagger by Adcock, and an infield roller, base hit by Chuck Tanner. That's all we've had in the scoring column. Two to nothing. Hodges is bat in the fourth with one on and none out. Buell with a stretch in the pitch. Buell takes the slider on the corner for strike one. Strike one count to Hodges. Amorose to follow, then Campanella. Perillo at first. Moves off about three steps now as Buell goes to the stretch. The fastball is high, and it's one and one. One ball, one strike on Hodgins. Day game tomorrow will be on at 2.25 to air it for you from Milwaukee. Hodges takes a breaking ball, low and away for ball two, and it's two and one now. Two balls, one strike. 
right hander Bob Beal for Milwaukee. One and one on the year against Don Newcomb, who is two and two. The two one look, and here's the pitch. I just swing and misses, and it's two two. Two two, that's right. Hodge is waiting. Now Buell goes to first base. But Furlow back easily. Buell again ready. Pitch to Gill. High on outside. Ball three. Hodges swung on a miss to throw to second base, and they got Furlow hung up. O'Connell chasing him back now to Adcock. Adcock runs him down and throws to Logan, who tags him out. And Kyle Furlow on a run down as Hodges is struck out. Furlow running on a 3 2 pitch, went about halfway as Hodges struck out. And they got Furlow to Murphy, and he's tagged out. And the play will go from the catcher to O'Connell to Adcock to Logan for the put out. Double play, two outs, and the batter will be Sandy Amaros. So for Milwaukee, a two, four, three, six double play. Two away. Nobody on, and here's Amaros waiting now. Zill delivers. Curve on the corner, and he's for strike one. Milwaukee, two, and the Dodgers, nothing. Fourth inning. Buell ready, delivers. Swung a high fly ball in left center field. Billy Bruton drifting over. Tanner there also. And it's Tanner. Bruton now makes the call at the last minute and hauls it in for the out. So Amaros skies to Billy Bruton in left center field, and that's all in the fourth inning. No runs on one base set. No errors, and for the Dodgers, none left on. And so at the end of three and a half innings of play, the score is Milwaukee 2, the Dodgers nothing. And Rose Oldsmobile always scores high. Yes, 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. Folks who buy from Rose year after year. There must be a reason. That's right. The reason is Rose Oldsmobile maintains in their modern service shop all the latest scientific equipment to give continuing warranty work on every Olds they sell. Service that continues on and on long after the sale is made. Rose Oldsmobile utilizes latest up-to-the-minute factory methods in offering this warranty service. Their mechanical experts are trained in their skills by regular attendance at Olds factory schools. That's why Rose Oldsmobile scores high in repeat old sales. Rose makes certain that the Oldsmobile you buy from them is kept in perfect running condition. That's why 67% of Rose Oldsmobile customers return. Rose offers more low price plus the continuing service that means satisfaction to you. See Rose Oldsmobile, Capital District's oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer, Central and Manning. The Dodgers and the Milwaukee Braves. All right, last of the fourth inning, 2 nothing Milwaukee, and play-by-play play, right back to Jerry. Chuck Tanner stepping in, one for one tonight. Newt come into the windup, and here's the pitch to the left-hand batter. High and outside, ball one. Tanner got a slow roller up the first baseline for a base hit in the first inning. It drove in a run as Adcock came up in third. Two runs, four hits, no errors for Milwaukee. No runs, two hits, and no errors for Brooklyn. Last half of the fourth inning. Big Newt into the windup, and down it comes. Curve ball that's low, and it's ball two. Two nothing count. The wind up and down it comes. A ground ball to the right side. Gilliam scoops over up with it. Play the first. In time for the out. One away. Tanner goes down. Gilliam to Hodges. One up, one down. And Johnny Logan comes on now. Logan fly to right. First time up. Bill Booten is on deck and Dell rides to follow. One out done on last of the fourth inning. Milwaukee 2, the Dodgers nothing from Milwaukee County Stadium. Newcomb's pitch is swung on and fell to through the hole to left field for a base hit for Logan. Amaro's in to play it, fires it back in, and Logan on with hit number five off Newcomb. Line drive between third and short. 
So Logan on with one out, and Billy Bruton comes on. He popped up his first time. Now, as Logan delivers, a bouncing ball to the right side. Gilliam comes in for a play, back to second for one, and no play to first as Bruton is on on a fourth foul. Out at second base is uh, Logan, Gilliam to Reese. And before Rice comes on, let's pause now for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. And dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station. Downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. 10 o'clock, WOKO time. to Zimmer first time. We have one on with two outs now. Rice stepping in. Right-hand batter against Newcomb. Big down out of the stretch. All right, Bruton and the fans now start a go-go chant for Bruton. And there he goes. Here's Campy Stroh to second base, and it's not in time. Bruton has it stolen. Gilliam now registers the protest to second base on by a balance fan. But Lee gives him the sign back that Gilliam tagged him up too high. So Bruton steals second on ball one pitch down to right. Bruton on at second base. That's his third steal of the year. Rice takes a curveball high and it's ball two. Two balls, no strike. Dell Rice the batter with Bob Buell on deck. Two outs in the fourth inning. Milwaukee two, Brooklyn nothing. Newcomb ready again out of a stretch. Delivered fastball high and it's ball three. With first base open and Bob Buell the pitcher due up next, they're now going to pitch out and put Rice on. Ball four. Throw off Don Newcomb. That'll be the first base on ball. Two on now as Bob Buell will come on. Bob just now coming up out of the dugout. It's a nice hand as he appears. Crowd of near 40,000 at County Stadium tonight to watch the series opener. It'll be Ladies' Day tomorrow. We'll be on hand at 225 to send it to you. Two out, two on. Buell the batter, fouled out to Hodges, first time up. So Don Newcomb now ready to go. Checks the sign with Roy Campanella. Bob Buell, right-hand batter waiting. Here's the pitch. In for strike one. Off second base is Bill Bruton at first base, Dell Wright. Don Newcomb doing the work for the Dodgers. Big down out of a stretch again. Checks the runners. And the pitch to Buell. Strike two. Taken. Fastball right down. Bob kind of retreated with his left foot. And watched that one come over. 0-2 oh, count on Buell. Now again the look. And a pickoff play, but no throw as Reese cut in behind Bruton and Newcomb held up the throw and Bruton beat it back in. Strike two to Buell. Nuke ready and delivers again. Outside, ball one, one and two. Nuke wasting one, trying to send Buell after a bad one, but he wouldn't go. One and two. Bruton on second, Dell Rice on first. Now again, Newcomb ready. Sets and delivers. Buell takes strike three. He's out of there on all strike. First strikeout for Don Newcomb, and the side retired in the fourth inning for Milwaukee. No runs, one hit, no errors, and they left two. And so at the end of four, the score, Milwaukee two, the Dodgers nothing. 
first half of this game was brought to you by the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company of Brooklyn, brewers of Schaefer Beer, America's oldest lager beer. Now your host for the next five innings will be Lucky Strike, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. It's made by the American Tobacco Company. Tobacco is our middle name. Well, you know, folks, the Dodgers and Giants packed more thrilling baseball into a three-game package than we've seen in many a season. Two games decided by a single run, two to one and six to five and 15 innings, and then a shutout by Johnny Padres for Brooklyn's getaway victory at the Polo Grounds. But the scores, you know, were almost incidental to that series. Don't think we've ever seen so many great plays in a weekend of baseball. And we're looking for more when the Dodgers get back home because when they do, it'll be the Giants and Dodgers all over again. This time at Everett Field. Jot down the dates. The night of May 24th, afternoon game Saturday, May 25th, and Sunday, May 26th. Do your ticket shopping early and be there. Out of the top of the fifth inning with Roy Campanella first up and in the call to play for Lucky Strike, Vince Scully. Vince? Thank you, Jerry, and good evening, everybody. Roy Campanella first up now, and Bob Buell serves him a curve in for the strike on one. Campanella around as if to bunt, then let it come down. Roy flying to left field in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Campy batting 271. Campanella, Zimmer, and Newcomb, the way they come up. Buell serves a breaking ball and misses. One ball, one strike. Mule right back again. Cavanella takes a curveball in the dirt. Ball two, two and one. We're in the fifth inning. Milwaukee two runs on five hits. The Dodgers no runs on two hits. The two and one pitch to Cavanella. Fastball outside. Ball three, three and one. Braves picking up two runs in the first inning on a single by Aaron, a triple by Adcock, and a trickle single up along first for Chuck Tanner. 3-1 pitch. Campy swings around. He goes and doesn't get it. 3-2. and two. Roy really letting out that time. Almost sat down. Campy swings is a high foul off third base. There'll be no play on it. Back into the crowd. Count remains three and two. The Dodgers with their two hits tonight. Gilliam singled to right in the first inning. And Perlo singled to center in the fourth. Outside of that, the Dodger batters have been very quiet against Bob Buell. Bob ready now in the full count pitch to Campy. On the corner. Got him looking as Campy was spotting to first. Campanella has thrown his bat away. He was going towards first base, and Jack Crawford said, you're out. Oh, Campy caught looking. That is the second strikeout for Bob Buell. His other strikeout came on Hodges, and they hung Perillo out to dry in the fourth inning. Here's Don Zimmer. Hit a bullet, but right at Chuck Tanner in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Zim batting 270. Swings and runs the pitch back onto the screen on 1. Same two ball clubs tomorrow afternoon. Don Drysdale and Gene Conley. Bill looks in, now ready, comes to the plate, and the pitch is down low. One ball, one strike. They are getting a little smoky here in the hollow where County Stadium is located, so there's a very much of a haze out in the outfield. The 1 1 pitch, Zimmer swings a hot one back of the bag and backhanded by Matthews, who makes his play. So Zimmer has hit the ball sharply twice and is 0 for 2 for his efforts. Two down and Don Newcomb coming up. That must be some kind of a machine shop or an oil refinery or something like that. If we were in Pittsburgh, you'd say it's a blast furnace. Just starting to get a little smoky. To make it tough, I imagine, for the outfielders. Don Newcomb flied to left field in the third inning. He's 0 for 1. Don batting 320. Two out, bases empty in the fifth inning. Milwaukee two, Brooklyn nothing. The pitch to Newcomb, fastball in for the strike. On one. Mueller beat Brooklyn eight times last year. Winds and comes to the plate, and a strike one serve. He bounces a curve. One ball, one strike. 
Bob Buell was most effective against Brooklyn here at County Stadium last year. Four starts, four wins, four complete games. One winner way outside. One-handed by Del Rice. Ball two. Two and one. Phillies are leading Cincinnati 4-2 at the end of three innings. And that's their ball game to watch. Redlegs, after winning 12 straight, tangling with a surprising Philadelphia ball club. Buell comes back 2-1 to Newcomb, who takes a wave at a sharp breaking curve. Tried to check the swing and couldn't do it. 2-2. Two two. Oh, this is wild with Newcomb the batter here in the fifth inning. Braves 2, Brooklyn nothing. Lucky strike, sending it all to you. Fastball is inside, ball three. Yes, Lucky Strike, the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Blowing some smoke rings to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The old checking side with Del Rice. The right-handed delivers 3-2, and the fastball is outside, and Big Nuke is on. That is the third walk given up by Bob Buell, who thus far in the ballgame has been pleasingly wild as far as the Milwaukee cause is concerned. Been around the plate, but he's had the hitters kind of loose. Heavy windbreaker being brought out to Newcomb because of the dampness in the air. Jim Gilliam waiting to the right of the plate. Gilliam singled to right field in the first inning and bounced out in the third. One for two. Oh, waiting now for Newcomb to get buttoned up. Del Rice holding up two fingers on his right hand to keep everybody in the ballgame. Two out. Two nothing. Braves, fifth inning. Buell turns on the rubber now and comes set. Checks Newcomb and delivers, and Gilliam takes up high. Ball one. On deck, Pee Wee Reese. Dodgers had a very pleasant flight on their brand new Convair from LaGuardia over to Milwaukee. Got in here last night. 1 0 pitch to Gilliam. A hot one wide of first and through in the right field for a base hit. Newcomb around second, going to third, and will make it easily as Aaron gets the ball back into Danny O'Connell. So the Dodgers on Gilliam's second base hit have their first man to get to second safely and now to third. Gilliam was the man to get to second safely in the first inning, and Newcomb is the first Dodger to reach third base. So Junior is two for three. It's number three off Bob Buell, and T.B. Reese steps in. Reese sacrificed and walked, so he's not been up officially, batting 240. One thing the outfielders have to do tonight, after all the rain we had, if there's a base hit through the infield, the outfielder must charge it. Otherwise, the ball will die on the wet grass and cause trouble. Reese takes the first pitch down low. Ball one. One and oh. Big Ernie Johnson begins to loosen up now in the Milwaukee bullpen, way out in deepest right center. The one oh pitch to Reese, a breaking ball low and outside, and Del Rice going on both knees to block it. So Buell is now in trouble. Two balls, no strikes. Sykes, Reese waiting, Buell delivers, and it's too low, ball three. So Bob Buell now is one pitch away from loading him up. Don Newcomb at third, Gilliam at first with two outs. The 3-0 and oh pitch to Reese outside that loads the bases, and here comes Snyder. I used to say in all the old movies, the natives are restless tonight. About 40,000 natives of Milwaukee stirring around a bit as the Dodgers make a decided effort now to get back in the ballgame. Base is loaded, two out on the batter, Duke Snyder, who has flied to center and struck out. Snyder stepping in with a 260 batting average. 2-0 Milwaukee in the fifth inning. Brooklyn trying to get rich in a hurry now with the bases loaded and two out. Buell to his windup and delivers. Snyder swings and slices one foul. Off third base, it'll go to the upper deck. 0-1. Don Newcomb at third. Jim Gilliam at second. Pee Wee Reese at first. 0-1 the count to Snyder. Duke with four home runs and ten runs batted in. Brillo has had quite a spring. He has twice as many runs batted in. 20. Snyder waiting, 0-1 the count. 
Joe winds and delivers. The Duke swings. There's a high fly ball to left field. It should be an easy chance for Chuck Tanner. The left-hander comes in under it and takes it. And Bob Buell's out of the jam. For the Dodgers in the fifth inning. No runs, one hit. They leave three men. They have left six in five innings. And the score at the end of four and a half innings of play. Milwaukee two and Brooklyn nothing. Now here's Gary. Well, sometime or other, we've all watched the third base coach flashing signs, but did you ever watch old Ben flashing his sign? His hand held out, palm up. Well, that means I uh, left my luckies at home. Can I mooch one? A beaming smile. Well, that's our sign that he's got his luck and enjoying it. What else? Because a lucky is all fine tobacco. Naturally, good tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Hey, uh, what's he signaling now? Oh, let's all light up a lucky. Good idea, huh? For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. You'll say a lucky's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Inning coming on. Danny O'Connell, the first batter for Milwaukee. The Dodgers had a golden opportunity to slip away. Then as Bob Buell came through in the clutch to get Snyder on a high fly ball to left field and cut down the side with the bases loaded. So as we go to play in the last of the fifth inning, it is still Milwaukee two and the Dodgers nothing. Back to play, and here again is Ben. Well, Danny O'Connell has bounced out short to first and singled, beating out a trickle ball when Don Zimmerd fired to first base, just not in time. O'Connell one for two, batting 268. O'Connell, Henry Aaron, and then Eddie Matthews throw some big guns moving into position. Should anybody get on deck, maybe Joe Adcock will come up. So Newcomb has all the work cut out for him now as he goes to work here in the fifth inning. Braves two runs on five hits. The Dodgers no runs on three hits. Big Newcomb goes to his windup now and slows up on the curve and misses high and inside. Ball one. Braves have left four men. The Dodgers have left six. Milwaukee two, Brooklyn nothing. Newcomb staring in, getting a sign from Campanella. Now the 1-0 pitch to Danny O'Connell. Curveball punched that, hits to the right side. Gilliam over to plug up the hole and makes his play. O'Connell goes down second to first, one up, one away. Henry Aaron has single to center and slide to right field. His fly ball to right was a belt to right center. That thrill caught going away right near the 394-foot mark. Henry Aaron off to a tremendous jump this year. Rated perhaps the most dangerous hitter in the National League. Newcomb delivers and the pitch is in for the strike. Going one. Leads the league in home runs with nine. Runs batted in with 25. Base hits with 40. The on one pitch down. Cut on. Hit off the thumbs. A high foul off third base. Jimmer coming over, but he has no play. 0-2. And also, besides leading in base hits, home runs, and runs batted in, also leads in runs scored with 27. So in a sense, Henry Aaron and Fred Haney have confounded the league. They figured with Henry Aaron batting second, he would not be driving in many runs. But here he is leading the league. The 0-2 pitch now to Hank. Newcomb delivers. The pitch is cut on and fouled away. Out of play in the upper deck just to the left of home plate. 0-2 the count. Strike sending it all to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and delighted to be sending a big ball game your way. Wishing you the very best wherever you may be. The 0 2 pitch to Henry Aaron outside. Campanella had his right arm cocked, ready to fire the ball around the infield, and umpire Shag Crawford said no. One ball, two strikes. One out, base is empty, last of the fifth inning. Milwaukee 2, Brooklyn nothing. Don Newcomb and Bob Buell. Newcomb staring in. Aaron kind of pinwheeling that bat like a pendulum. Now we're ready. The one and two pitch to Henry. Cut on and lined in the right center. Slicing away from Snyder. That will roll to the whale. Snyder after the ball is up with it. Aaron is around second and holds right there. Gilliam gets the ball back to the infield. So Aaron, who was robbed of a base hit on a great running play by Frillo, 
slice this one into deepest right center that hooked away from Schneider. And by the time the Duke had run it down, Henry had a double. So Henry Aaron is two for three. The Dodgers to a man would certainly like to find out how in the world to pitch to him, though I imagine the rest of the National League feels the same way. Newcomb now rubbing up the ball, walking out towards second base. And is having a chat with Aaron. Whatever he said, Aaron is laughing. And Newcomb now comes back. The crowd is booing, but I think Newcomb just walked off the mound and probably as a guest said, Aaron, what in the world do I have to do to get you out? And Aaron just grinned good-naturedly. Uh, Newcomb came walking back to the mound. The crowd, I think, thought that Newcomb was upset, but we have the glasses on him, and Don just kind of was shaking his head in admiration. All right, here's Eddie Matthews, who has popped out and fouled out. He is 0 for 2. Aaron at second base with one out. Newcomb comes set, checks Henry Aaron, and delivers to Matthews, and the fastball is on the corner for a strike, on one. Sad, looks at Aaron, now delivers. A strike one pitch is cut on as a high fly ball to deep center, but Snyder's there calling. Henry Aaron tagging up. Snyder grabs the ball. Aaron bluffs and then holds, and Snyder throws a strike on a bounce to Zimmers. What a throw by the Duke. He really cut that one loose. Now we have two down. Henry Aaron remains at second base, and the batter will be Joe Adcock. You know, talking about Don Newcomb going out to second base and saying comes to Henry Aaron, and Aaron laughing... Mel Ott tells a story of one time how he came up and hit a home run, and as he trotted around the base path, the pitcher picked up the rosin bag and threw it at him. I mean, that's getting mad. By the way, the pitcher's control was not too good. He didn't hit Mel. Here's Adcock with a triple, and he flied to right. One for two. Newcomb takes a peek at Iron at second base, works the plate, and there's a ground ball to Gilliam, who's up with it cleanly, waits for Hodges, and then hits him with his throw. So Adcock is retired 4-3, to three, and the Braves go out in the fifth inning. No runs. One hit. They leave one man, they have left five. And at the end of five innings of play, Milwaukee two and Brooklyn nothing. No wonder he's whistling. He's happy because he bought his 1957 Olds from Rose Oldsmobile, the oldest franchise Oldsmobile dealer in the Capital District. Why, I wouldn't even consider buying my Olds from any dealer but Rose Oldsmobile. There must be a reason. There is, because Rose maintains the proper facilities for warranty work that ensures your satisfaction. Service that continues long after the sale is made. Rose Oldsmobile's modern shop contains all the latest factory-approved equipment for keeping your Olds in tip-top condition. Their careful servicemen are constantly being trained in Olds factory schools. That's the reason. That's why over 67% of Rose Oldsmobile sales are to repeat customers. Folks who come back year after year because Rose offers more. Low price plus continuing interest in your satisfaction. There is no substitute for integrity. And integrity means Rose Oldsmobile, Central and Manning. Satisfying customers at the same location for more than 30 years. That's Rose Oldsmobile. Six, the Dodgers coming on, so let's get right back to Vin. Carl Perillo lined out to center field and single to center. He's one for two. Perillo will be followed by Hodges and then Amarose. Six inning, two nothing Milwaukee. The Dodgers had a chance in the fifth when they filled the bases with two out, but Snyder flied to left. Now they go into the sixth. Bob Buell ready, and the right-hander comes to the plate, and Perillo takes a curve low and away. Ball one. Milwaukee two runs on six hits. Brooklyn no runs on three hits. Buell comes right back again, 1-0, and Frillo lets the fastball go under his hand. Ball two, 2-0. Two Carl now backs out and looks down at Billy Herman. Buell has walked four men thus far. Struck out two. Make it three. Frillo takes a pitch in for a strike, 2-1. and one. So he has four walks and three strikeouts. Buell ready, and the 2-1 pitch to Frillo, taken low, ball three, three and one. On deck, Gil Hodges. Buell winds, working in a hurry, the 3-1 pitch, high and inside, ball four. So Carl Frillo walks to open up things in the sixth inning, 
That marks the fifth base on balls given up by Bob Buell. Walked two men in the fifth inning. He get himself in some trouble, but worked his way out of it, and now starts the sixth by walking Carl. Joe Hodges stepping in, bounced out, and struck out. And on the strikeout, the Braves ended up on a double play as they ran Frillo down between first and second. Hodges settled in the hitter's box. Buell looks over at Frillo and delivers. And Hodges takes up high for one. And they begin to get restless again here at County Stadium. The end of four innings, the Phillies four and the Red Legs two. Buell delivers. Hodges takes way outside. Ball two. So now, with a storm signal up, Danny O'Connell comes in from second base to try and settle Bob Buell down. Hodges has checked the sign with Billy Herman to see if he'll be swinging or not, or if he's allowed to. The 2-0 and pitch. Ball three. So Bob Buell now stumbling around a bit. Walked for a low and is falling behind the Hodges. Three balls and no strikes. Buell pinwheels his right arm around, trying to loosen up the shoulder muscles. Three and all to count the Hodges. On deck, Sandy Amaros. The free old pitch. High ball four. And he's walked the first two men in the sixth inning. So Buell has now walked six men. Johnson, who was up before, now begins to stir again in the Milwaukee bullpen in deepest right center. Brillo standing in second, Hodges at first, nobody out in the sixth inning, Milwaukee two and Brooklyn nothing. Sandy Amaros walked and flied to center, 0 for 1. Sandy wiggling that bat back of his left ear. Eddie Matthews inside third in the event of a bunt. Buell delivers Amaros around the bunt and takes low. Ball one. And Del Rice is fuming and took it out on Bob Buell. He fired the ball back at Buell. And now Del Rice and Chad Crawford are mask to mask right back to home plate. The umpire has taken his mask off and Del Rice is really steaming. Now coming in is second baseman Danny O'Connell and third baseman Eddie Matthews, and they abruptly just spin Del Rice around and say, let's get back to catching. Boy, Matthews made no bones about it. He grabbed Rice by the left arm and just spun him around. And Rice, still growling and fuming, settles back low back of the plate. One ball and no strikes to Sandy Amaros. Real comes set. Delivers 1-0. Outside. Ball two. Oh, Bob Buell waiting around in the stormy waters now. Walk for a low and Hodges and has fallen behind Amaros. Two balls and no strikes. Fred Haney nervously getting up on the brave bench now, facing up and down. Now stopping with his hands behind his back, just staring out. Buell turns on the rubber, checks his runners. A 2-0 pitch, low, ball three. So Buell is one pitch away from loading him up again. And Haney really facing up and down in front of the brave bench. Ernie Johnson firing away in the Milwaukee bullpen. Amos waiting. Three balls and no strikes. Buell comes set. The 3-0 pitch. In there at the knees for a strike. As Amos started to walk towards first base, they call him back. Three and one to Sandy. Amos has checked the sign now. If there is one. Buell sat and the 3-1 pitch. Amaros takes low, and that loads him up. And coming out to the mound in a hurry, manager Fred Haney. So the Dodgers, who had bases loaded and two out in the fifth inning, could not score as Snyder flied to left. And now they are given a golden opportunity. Bases loaded with nobody out, and Campanella the battery. Haney out to the mound, talking to Buell. Del Rice is out there. Joe Adcock. Ernie Johnson, who was so brilliant against Brooklyn at Ebbets Field, continues to fire away in the brave bullpen. Buell still has the ball, and that's a good indication he's staying in, and yes, he is. Fred Haney walks away. Anytime you see a meeting out at the mound, you watch the manager. If he takes the ball away from the pitcher, no matter how long he stands out there, you figure the pitcher has had it. Roy Campanella with the bases loaded and nobody out. 
He has slide to left and struck out looking. The Braves are in double play depth. Buell delivers to camp a strike. Sandy Amoros at first. Gil Hodges at second. Carl Perillo at third. Nobody out. 2 nothing. Milwaukee sixth inning. So light up a lucky and stay right with us. Buell delivers strike one. Campy swings a fly ball into right field. Henry Aaron coming in, tagging up his Perillo. Here comes Perillo. Aaron's throw, and back to third goes Perillo. Perillo had plenty of chance to come in and score. For the throw, Aaron had given a run up, and he was throwing to third base. But Perillo decided to get back to the bag. Bases remain loaded with one out. Trillo mad at himself and kicks at the bag. One out. So the Dodgers give up a run on that play, or at least a chance to score one. All right, Don Zimmer is 0 for 2. Lined out and was backhanded out by Eddie Matthews. Zimmer 0 for 2. Bill winds and delivers, and Zim takes a strike on one. Perillo can well remember a ball game last year with the Cincinnati Redlegs. He caught a fly ball in deepest right center, and Bertie Tebbets, who was coaching in third, held up Bob Thurman, and all Perillo did was lob the ball back into second. That cost Cincinnati. The strike one pitch to Zimmer. Cut on and missed. It's got third. 0 2. So Bob Buell, given a break, as Perillo held it third on the fly ball to pretty deep right, is now trying to make the most of it. Zimmer waiting. Base is loaded. One out. Buell staring in. Now to his wind up. The strike two pitch. Low and outside. Ball one. One and two. After Zimmer comes Don Newcomb. Brillo at third. Hodges at second. Amaros at first. One out. Buell has to count his way. Zimmer waiting. Now Bob winds a one and two pitch. Don takes outside and low. Ball two. Two and two. Buell backs off the rubber, trying to think things over and get his sights squared away. Zimmer just waiting. Buell ready and winds. A 2-2 pitch to Zimmer. Outside. Ball three. And Zimmer certainly had a great knowledge of the strike zone to take that pitch. And about six Dodgers come off the bench in the right-hand corner of the dugout. And you can hear them all hollering and clapping hands to Zimmer to hang in there. So a full count on the bases loaded as Zimmer took a pitch about two inches outside the strike zone. Buell flicks it as far with his gloved hand. Now he's ready. Full count pitch to Zimmer. Cut on and miss strike three. is loaded and nobody out. Got Campanella on a fly ball, has struck out Zimmer, and it's up to Don Newcomb. Frillo still at third, Hodges at second, Amoros at first. And that fly ball to right field when Frillo held on might be the big play in this game. Certainly a one-run affair is a lot different than any other score. It's 2-0 Milwaukee in the sixth with two out. Newcomb settles in the hitter's box, Buell delivers, just low, ball one, one and oh. The 1-0 pitch to Don Newcomb. Cut on and sliced foul off third in the skyline boxes. 1-1. One and, one. and the count to Newcomb. One ball, one strike. Buell delivers 1-1. One and one. Newcomb swings a little pop fly. Johnny Logan going out. He's under it. Waiting. He's got it. And the Dodgers have blown another chance. gets a standing ovation as he walks off the mound. And the Dodgers lead three more. So in their six innings of that bat, they have left nine men. And the score at the end of five and a half innings of play, Milwaukee two and Brooklyn nothing. Baseball experts, here comes another lucky strike baseball quiz. But first, a moment to relax and light up a better tasting lucky strike. Yes, sir, lucky strike is a genuine cigarette. All fine tobacco. 
naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco that toasted the taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Have you tried a Lucky lately? You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Now, a Lucky Strike baseball quiz. You ready? Who holds the Major League record for the most consecutive years leading the league in home runs? Did you say Babe Ruth? Well, if you did, you're wrong. Ralph Kiner set the record when he led the league, the National League, in home runs for seven consecutive years, 1946 to 1952. And that's our Lucky Strike quiz. Now, before we get back to play, let's pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. Head dial 1460 WOKO Albany, the Capital District's most talked about station, downtown studios in the Hotel Wellington. 24 now before 11 WOKO time. Bottom of the sixth inning, Milwaukee coming on, and uh, Chuck Turner, the first batter up. So let's go right back to the action, and here's Ben. Well, Don Newcomb, I imagine, talking to himself out there on the mound. The Dodgers have left six men on the base pads in the last two innings. They trail 2 nothing as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Chuck Tanner, Johnny Logan, and Bill Bruton. Tanner got an infield single that brought a run in and bounced out second to first. Newcomb ready to go to work now on the left-hand batter. Chuck Tanner sends him a fastball outside, ball one. The fade attendance tonight, and the rain did its damage. Fade attendance, 34,731. There would have been close to 45,000 folks here tonight except for the rain. The 1-0 pitch, Tanner takes on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. They had an advance sale of over 31,000 tickets. And you figure that anywhere from 10 to 15,000 more folks would have come out. The one wanted to Chuck Tanner take in a curveball down low. Ball two, two and one. Milwaukee, two runs on six hits and no errors. They've left five. And the Dodgers, no runs on three hits and no errors. They have left nine. Newcomb winds and the 2 1 pitch to Tanner. Curveball low. Ball three. Three and one. Groan comes up from the crowd here at County Stadium for out on the scoreboard. Those amazing Cincinnati Redlegs are at it again. We'll tell about it. 3-1 pitch is low, ball four, and Chuck Tanner's on. The Redlegs at the end of five innings have come from behind and now lead the Phillies 5-4. to four. Cincinnati trying to win their 13th straight. That is the second walk given up by Newcomb. The other one was intentional to Del Rice. Chuck Tanner at first. Nobody out, bottom of the sixth inning. Johnny Logan, the batter. Logan is fly to right and single to left. Newcomb comes set, takes a peek at first, decides to throw over there to keep Tanner near the bag. Lucky strike, sending you a big ball game. The Dodgers and Braves from County Stadium. Newcomb turns on the rubber and now comes set. Delivers to Logan, who's around to bunt, and bunts in the air and foul ground. It drops untouched between the on-charging Hodges and Roy Campanello. The count 0-1. The Braves got the two runs in the first inning with one out Aaron singles. After Matthews popped up, Adcock tripled to right field to get the run over. Tanner dribbled the ball up along first and beat the play for an infield single to allow the second run to come over. And that's been it. Newcomb sat, another look over at Tanner, and he throws over there, chucks his back. The Dodgers have had at least one base runner in every inning, and in the fifth and again in the sixth, they left them loaded. Luke ready, and the strike one pitch. Logan around the butt and does up towards first. Hodges Wells goes to Reese. They get the force play on Chuck Tanner. Oh, Gil Hodges making a fine defensive play, firing a strike to Reese. Tanner retires 3-6 to six from Gil Hodges to Pee Wee Reese. One out on the batter, Bill Bruton. Bruton has popped the short and hit into a force play. He stole the base. Bill over for 2.
Logan sat, throws over to first. Johnny Logan back. Lugan sat and delivers. Bruton swings a high drive to deepest right center. Snyder on the run. Perillo on the run. It's between them. Going to the barrier fence. Logan is around third. He'll score. And Bruton has a stand-up triple. Spikes one into deepest right center. Neither Snyder nor Perillo had a play on the ball. Bruton tripling in Johnny Logan. And the Braves now lead three to nothing. One out, the infield drawn up, and Del Wright stepping in. Rice tonight is 0 for 1 with an intentional walk. Newcomb winds and delivers. Dell nubs it back foul on one. three runs, and the Dodgers nothing. Milwaukee, three runs on seven hits. Infield drawn in tight, Rice waiting. Newcomb ready and delivers, and they pitch out. Bruton had a cautious lead at third and stays right at the bag. One ball, one strike. Andy Koufax and Clem Levine in the Brooklyn bullpen. Wright swings and squirts it away foul off the end of his bat. One and two. Brave three. Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning. Bill Bruton at third with one out. One and two to count to Del Rice. Newcomb winds on the one and two pitch. Taken just outside. Two and two. Del Rice comes the pitcher, Bob Buell. Luke staring in. Rice moves that bat back and forth. Now Don delivers two and two. Curve fouled away again. ready and the 2-2 pitch to Del Rice. Fastball got him swinging. The Rice strikes out for the second out. Bill Bruton holding at third and that will bring up Bob Buell. Buell getting an ovation for a gritty performance this evening. Especially in the sixth inning when the Dodgers had the bases loaded and nobody out and Campanella, Zimmer and Newcomb could not deliver. With Buell up there, and he's a right-hand batter, there is always a threat of Bill Bruton attempting a steal of home. He runs halfway down the line as Newcomb's fastball is a comebacker right to the mound. Newcomb takes his post to first, and that's it. In the sixth inning for Milwaukee, they pick up one run on one hit. The triple by Bill Bruton, and one man left on base. Now, the end of six innings of play. Milwaukee, three runs, seven hits, and no errors. Brooklyn, no runs, three hits, and no errors. And now let's run down our lucky strike scoreboard, and here's Jerry. Well, Vinny Cincinnati came up with three runs in the last half of the fifth inning and now leads the Phils by a score of 5-4 to four through five innings of play, trying for the 13th straight. Packers started for Cincinnati, was knocked out in the first inning. Fowler came on, and then uh, he was replaced in the uh, sixth inning by Sanchez. For Philadelphia, Cardwell and Farrell have done the pitching, and Thurman had a home run for Cincinnati in the fifth inning with two on to account for the three runs and the lead in the ball game 5-4. to four. The Giants at St. Louis at the end of six of the half innings. It is five for the Giants and for the Cardinals, three. Gomez going against Marzell and Merritt. Sauer a home run for the Giants in the fourth, none on. Cott hit one in the sixth, none on. Dark for the Cardinals in the third, none on. In a day game this afternoon, the Pirates beat the Cubs eight to six. Eight runs, 11 hits, no errors. Chicago, six runs, 11 hits, and three errors. Arroyo the winner, and Drott was the loser. In the American League, Detroit beat Boston 2 to nothing as Duke Moss beats uh, Sullivan, and Moss gets his fifth win of the year. Kansas City and the Yankees postponed rain. Chicago, Washington postponed rain. Cleveland, Baltimore postponed rain. Our ball game now moves to the top of the seventh inning, so let's go right back to play, and here's Ben. 
Jim Gilliam first up now. Popule delivers and gets it low. Ball one. Gilliam, Reese, and Snyder in the seventh inning. 3 nothing Milwaukee. Gilliam has single to right. Bounced out and single to right again. The 1-0 pitch to Junior. Take it on the outside corner for a strike. One and one. Bob Buell has given up three hits. He has walked six and struck out four. Newton has walked two, one of them intentionally. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Junior. Down low, ball two. Two and one. Buell ready. The 2-1 pitch to Gilliam. High, ball three. So Bob Buell... So that trouble in the fifth inning with his control. A great deal of trouble in the sixth inning is starting off on that same bad foot again. Three and one. The count to Jim Gilliam. Buell winds and delivers three one. In there. Strike two. Gilliam started to go towards first and is called back. Full count to Jim. Sandy Koufax and Clem Levine heating up in the Dodger bullpen in deepest right center. 3-2 pitch. Gilliam takes outside ball four. So in adding up our watch, Buell walked a man in the second inning, walked a man in the third, walked two in the fifth, and walked three in the sixth, and now walks a man in the seventh. So he's really waiting around. That brings up Pee Wee Reese who has not been up officially, sacrificed and walked twice. Buell comes set and delivers high and outside, ball one. Ernie Johnson up again in the Milwaukee bullpen. On deck, Duke Snyder. Buell comes set, looks to Gilliam, delivers to Reese in for the strike, one and one. Buell has walked eight men in six innings plus. The Dodgers, however, have not been able to take advantage of it. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Pee Wee, a bouncing ball to the hole over to plug it up as O'Connell knocks the ball down, now picks it up and throws too late to first base. And we'll see how they rule it. O'Connell going into the hole, knocks the ball down and couldn't make a play and he draws an error. So Danny O'Connell charged with the first error of the evening. And the Dodgers, who had two golden opportunities go down the drain, are given a third here in the seventh inning. Luke Snyder, the batter. Dodgers have left nine men in six innings. Snyder has fly to center, fly to left, and struck out. He is over three. Buell delivers. The Duke swings a one bouncer to Danny O'Connell. He goes to Logan. Back to Adcock, the double play. third base goes Jim Gilliam, so we have two out in the seventh. Boy, this must be a most frustrating ball game for that Brooklyn bench, for manager Walter Olsen, and for a pitcher Don Newcomb in particular. Dodgers have met all over the place, but can't get them over. Double play, four to six to three, the second double play of the evening for Milwaukee. Gilliam at third with two out, and the batter is Carl Perillo, who is lined out to center, single to center, and walks. Perillo takes a curve in for the strike. On one. Perillo waiting. Buell goes back to his windup. The strike one pitch. Perillo lines it into right center. Billy Bruton going on the run. Away over. Reaching up. It's Byam rolling to the fence. Gilliam scores and Perillo has a stand-up double. The ball gets away from... Danny O'Connell on the relay, and Frillo goes to third. That relay gets away from Logan, and finally Eddie Matthews comes over to pick it up, and Danny O'Connell will draw another error. So Frillo doubled into right center. That got the run over. Billy Bruton threw to Danny O'Connell, who booted the relay, and Frillo kept on going to third. Then O'Connell's hurried relay got away from Logan, but Matthews had backed up. They probably have to beat that ball to quiet it a bit. So the Dodgers get a run. It is now 3-1 Milwaukee. Brillo at third with two out, and the batter is Gil Hodges, who has bounced out, struck out, and was. Buell delivers, and the curve is over. Strike one. The 
two, a wind to strike one pitch. Hodges takes low and outside. One ball, one strike. Colfax and Levine in the Dodger bullpen. Ernie Johnson in the Milwaukee pen. Hodges takes outside. Del Rice going on his right knee to block it. Milwaukee three, Brooklyn one with two out in the seventh inning. Carl Frillo at third base. Hodges hitting with a count two and one. Pass ball outside and low. Ball three. Three and one. On deck, left-hand batter Sandy Amaros. Hodges now checking with Billy Herman to see if he has a sign to hit. Buell up on top now, looking in to get his sign. Wines in the three one Half swing, and Hodges just does check in time. It's low for ball four. So, Mr. Bob Buell, if ever a man was flirting with dynamite, he's been doing it tonight. That is his ninth walk. Nine walks in six and two-third innings. Brillo coming down off third. Hodges at first with two out, and Amaro steps in. 3-1 Braves, seventh inning. Buell turns on the rubber, comes set, and delivers. And Amaros takes a strike on one. Lucky strike, sending it all to you from County Stadium in Milwaukee. Buell set. Now the strike one pitch. Amaros hits one wide, a through, and the right field for a base hit. Perillo scores. Hodges around second will go to third easily. And the Dodgers are right back in it now. Milwaukee three and Brooklyn two. And Fred Haney going out to the mound. So Amaros singles to right. Brillo scoring and Hodges advancing to third. Oddly enough, with all the chances that Hodges had here in the seventh inning, they finally scored with two outs. Snyder hitting into a double play, and then Brillo doubled in a run. Hodges walked, Amaros is singled, and it is now Milwaukee three and Brooklyn two, and they go to the bullpen. They want Ernie Johnson. So Ernie Johnson coming on to relieve Bob Buell, who gets a round of applause for a very gritty effort. He staggered in the fifth, weakened in the sixth, and had to come out in the seventh. It's quite a long walk-in from the Milwaukee bullpen in deepest right center. So we can have a deliberate look at our Lucky Strike scoreboard, and here's Jerry to run it down carefully for you. Okay, Vinny. The pilot suit the Chicago Cubs this afternoon, 8 to 6, on 8 runs, 11 hits, no errors, and Chicago had 6 runs, 11 hits, and 3 errors. Klein, Arroyo, and Pace for Pittsburgh, with Arroyo getting the win. Drop was the starter for Chicago and the loser. Drossen, Singleton, and Lown also pitched. For the Pirates, Paul's a home run in the second none on. Thomas in the fifth none on. For Chicago, Long in the first one on. Neiman in the eighth none on. And Bolger in the ninth with one on. Pittsburgh winning it eight to six. In a night game at St. Louis, at the end of six and a half innings of play, the Giants have five and the Cardinals have three. Gomez with a 4-1 record, trying for number five tonight. For the Cardinals, Mizell started, came out in the seventh inning in favor of Merritt. Sauer, a home run for the Giants in the fourth none on. Cott in the sixth none on. Dark at one for the Cardinals in the third with none on. Philadelphia, Cincinnati at Cincinnati in the Red Lakes trying for 13. Pulled up with three runs in the last half of the fifth inning on a home run by Bob Thurman. And it's now 5-4, to four, Cincinnati over Philadelphia at the end of five innings of play. Hacker, Fowler, and Sanchez for Cincinnati. Cardwell and Farrell for Philadelphia. In American League activity this afternoon, Detroit beat Boston 2-0. Two, to two runs, five hits, no errors. And Boston, no runs, five hits, one error. Moss getting the win over Sullivan, who was relieved by DeLock. Victoria hit a home run for Detroit in the seventh, none on. Kansas City, the Yankees, postponed because of rain. Chicago, Washington, postponed because of rain. Cleveland, Baltimore, they got the ball game started, and they played one and a half innings. Baltimore was leading one to nothing, and then the game was called because of rain. So that's the rundown on the Lucky Strike scoreboard with the Pittsburgh Pirates beating Chicago 8-6, Giants leading St. Louis 5-3, Cincinnati leading Philadelphia by 5-4 score. On the mound, Ernie Johnson tossing down a few warm tosses now to relieve uh, Bob Buell, who's in a peck of trouble here in the seventh inning. Campanello will be the first batter to be followed by Zuma if Campy should keep it going. Dodgers have runners at first and third. We're ready to go back to action, so let's go right back to them. Well, Ernie Johnson, for all we know, and there was a story about it, might very well have saved his job with the Milwaukee Braves. 
back at Ebbets Field. If you remember a ball game where the Dodgers got off to a pretty good jump and the Braves came back and eventually won it 10-7, to it was a brilliant relief appearance by Ernie Johnson. That, as we said, might have saved his job. Johnson had not pitched for the Braves since an exhibition ball game with Brooklyn at Fort Worth, Texas, and that was quite a while ago. And he did not pitch in the regular season until that time at Ebbets Field. And in six innings, when, for all we know, his Major League future was on the line, he gave up just one hit, one walk, and struck out six. He did not allow a run. And he also appeared one other time since then and picked up a win. So he has appeared twice. He is 1-0 with the league, and the Dodgers will well remember his relief appearance at Ebbets Field. This will be the second time they look at him. Johnson pitching to Roy Campanella with Sandy Amaros at first, Joe Hodges at third. Two out and two runs over in the seventh inning and Milwaukee leading 3-2. to two. Campy just waiting. Johnson comes set. Texas runners in the tall right hand and delivers down low and into the dirt. Dug out nicely by Del Rice. 4-1. Johnson is perhaps the slowest pitcher in the National League. He is extremely deliberate. He wants to have the mound just so. Of course, it's his prerogative to take all the time that he wants, and he'll do it. He has a tendency also to pitch his motion is rather slow, so he upsets the hitters. He gets them anxious. He's a pretty good sinker, and he throws some curves and sliders. He is not a fastball pitcher, not by any means. Ernie kind of bends at the waist while he looks in to get his sign. Now set, and the 1-0 pitch to Campanella. Way out in front on a change. He doesn't get it. So there's that over-anxious hitter, and there's Johnson working slowly to him in the count one and one. 3-2 Milwaukee in the seventh inning. Johnson set, and the 1-1 pitch to Campanella. Down low, ball two, two and one. The Dodgers, of course have no one to blame but themselves. And Frillo, I imagine, is still muttering to himself about holding on to third on the fly ball by Campanella in the sixth inning. That was an easy run, but Frillo didn't want to come in. 2-1 pitch to Campanella. Take in outside, ball three, three and one. However, in any major leaguer's behalf, you can only make one decision and hold it. Frillo figured the ball wasn't deep enough and held on. You have no chance for that second guess. Campanella waiting. Three balls, one strike. Amaros at first. Hodges at third. Two out. 3-1 pitch to Camp. Cut on and miss. Strike two. Johnson again pouring at the dirt where the follow-throughs of Newcomb and Buell have chewed it up a bit. Ernie leaning on his left kneecap now while he gets his sign. Ready? With two out, Amos goes. The three-tour is cut on a little fly ball down the left field line, beginning to hook foul, going over as Matthews to take it for the out. So the Dodgers in the seventh inning finally break through to come up with two runs. Two hits. There were two errors, both by Danny O'Connell, and two men left on. So the Dodgers in seven innings have left 11. And the score at the end of six and a half innings of play, Milwaukee three and Brooklyn two. Well, say, friends, what do you say we listen in on some thoughts as expressed by a Dodger fan who, incidentally, is also a lucky smoker? Okay, let's go. Well, lucky seven. Time for all the hometown fans to stand up and be counted. I guess I'll do likewise. The stretch way out. Oh, boy, that feels good. Now, where am I lucky? Ah, fresh pack. Nothing like it. Lucky seven and a lucky strike. Oh, boy, that's great. They're not just talking when they say lucky tastes better. Tell you how much better. You light one up. You'll say a lucky's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. To the last of the seventh inning. Milwaukee, three runs, seven hits, and two errors. Brooklyn, two runs, five hits, and no errors. The Braves have left six. The Dodgers have left 11. Started Bob Buell, worked six and two-third innings, gave up two runs, walked nine, and struck out four. However, Buell can be the winning pitcher. Don Newcomb has given up three runs, seven hits. He has walked two men, one of them intentionally, and struck out two. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, the Braves will send up Danny O'Connell, Henry Aaron, and Eddie Matthews. (laughs) 
Big Newcomb goes to his windup now and delivers, and O'Connell swings a hot one foul outside a third and down the line. 0 and 1. O'Connell has bounced out twice and singled. One for three. Newcomb ready, and the strike one pitch to Danny. Cut on and sliced the other way to the right of home plate. 0 and 2. coaching at third. Johnny Riddle coaching at first for the Braves. Newcomb ready and the 0-2 pitch. Soft pitch up high. Changed up. One ball, two strikes. Del Crandall is loosening up in the Milwaukee bullpen. In case you might have a twitch back of the plate. Newcomb winds and one and two pitch to Danny O'Connell. Change up curve and a big chopper down to Don Zimmer. Is up with it. Guns is played to Hodges and we have one out. In case you weren't listening before, here comes Henry Iron and we've had some strange plays in the ball game, but that was really something. I imagine the writers will be asking Henry Iron and Newcomb what was going on. Aaron had single to center in the first inning, robbed of the base hit by Perillo in the third, and then doubled in the fifth. And after he doubled, Newcomb walked right off the mound, right out to second base, and said something to him. Nuke winds and delivers. Aaron swings a bouncer to the left of Reese, who's up with it cleanly, throws to Hodges in time. So they get Henry Aaron. Anyway, Newcomb walked right over to second base, right where Aaron was standing. We put the binoculars on him. Whatever Newcomb said, it made Henry Aaron laugh. And as a guest, we would say, knowing Newcomb, he probably said to Aaron, how in the world do I ever get you out? the crowd at the time misinterpreted Newcomb walking over there and began to boo, but then when they saw Aaron laugh, they forgot about it. Two out, here's Eddie Matthews. Newcomb's changeup is cut on, a high pop fly in the shallow right. Gilliam going out. Brillo coming in. Gilliam is calling and takes it. So the Braves brought quietly one, two, three. It's the first time they've been retired in order since the second inning. And at the end of seven innings of play, Milwaukee three runs, seven hits, and two errors. Brooklyn two runs, five hits, and no errors. First thing we'll do now is pause for station identification. This is the Brooklyn Dodgers Radio Network. 1460 WOKO, Albany, New York, the Capital District's most talked about station, with downtown studios and the Hotel Wellington. WOKO time now in 15 seconds, three minutes after 11 o'clock. Dodgers. Well, fans, remember now you have until May 22nd, just eight days away, to get your order in for our sensational two-for-one bargain sale of our 1957 Dodger yearbook and the new Schaefer Lucky Strike Baseball Guide. You can get both these swell books for 50 cents. The 1957 Dodger yearbook, complete with 48 pages of anecdotes, stories, and plenty of pictures. And the brand new Schaefer Lucky Strike Baseball Guide and Record Book, crammed full of all time Major League records, team rosters, diagrams of the ballpark, radio TV directories of all the teams, and much, much more. Both these baseball books can be yours for only a half a dollar. Here's how to get yours send 50 cents along with your name and address to Dodger Baseball Book, Box 119, Brooklyn, New York. Dodger Baseball Book, Box 119, Brooklyn, New York. Send in for yours right away. Do it tonight. Here we go back to play, and once more, here's Ben. The Braves are leading 3-2 to two as we go to the eighth inning. The Dodgers sending up Don Zimmer. Then we'll see about Don Newcomb's spot and Jim Gilliam. Zimmer is 0-3. Lined out, bounced out sharply, and struck out. Ernie Johnson in relief of Bob Buell. Right-hander delivers. Zimmer swings. There's a high fly ball into shallow right. O'Connell going out, but Aaron calling as the play in front of him and takes it for the out. One up, one away. Don Newcomb coming up as fly to left, walked, and popped out. Braves three, Dodgers two, eighth inning. Newcomb gave up two runs in the first inning on a single to center, a triple, and an infield single. The third run came in the sixth with one out, a triple by Bill Bruton got it over. 
Dodger two runs in the seventh, so it's three two Braves here in the eighth inning. One out. Johnson very easily going to his windup. Now delivers and Newcomb tries to drag a bunt and bunts it sharply to Danny O'Connell who throws him out. Had Don not hit the ball so well, he might have had a base hit for O'Connell plays pretty deeply for him. But Newcomb in just trying to drag a bunt. Well, he hit one sharply. Out he goes, four to three. Two down. And the batter is Jim Gilliam. Gilliam tonight has two singles to right, a walk, and he has bounced out short to first. Jim scored a run. Teddy Matthews inside the bag at third. Johnson delivers. Gilliam swings a high drive down the right field line, beginning to hook and go foul, and it'll go back into the bleachers. So Gilliam hits the ball pretty well, but pulls it too much. Count on one. Afternoon, it'll be Don Drysdale and Gene Conley. Airtime 2:25. Game time 2:30. Johnson ready in the strike one pitch. Gilliam hesitates and then watches it break low. One ball, one strike. In the Dodger bullpen, Rene Valdez and Don Besant loosening up, and now Valdez has stopped throwing. Besson throwing along, and now he stops. The so one-one pitch to Gilliam curve. Low and inside, ball two, two and one. When the Braves bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, they'll have Adcox, Hanner, and Logan. Gilliam waiting. Johnson winds in the 2 1 pitch. The junior cut on, the bouncer hit up to Joe Adcox, who'll make the play by himself. So the Dodgers, for the first time tonight, go out in order one, two, three. The other time, only three batters came to the plate was in the fourth inning. Frillo singled. Hodges struck out, and Frillo was caught in a rundown. And then Amrose flied out. But here in the eighth, they go out one, two, three. So the score at the end of seven and a half innings of play, Milwaukee three and Brooklyn two. And now here's Jerry. Say, fans, take a guess at the time here in Milwaukee. See how close you can get to it. Well, if you said it was seven after ten, then you're exactly right. And if you went a little further and said it was also light-up time, then you're thinking the same thing I am. Yes, sir? Time to cut your match to a lucky strike. Time to settle back to the real deep-down smoking enjoyment of this truly genuine cigarette. And believe me, a lucky is just that. Genuine because it's all cigarettes. All fine tobacco. Mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Last of the eighth inning in the 3-2 ball game with Adcock, Tanner, and Logan do up here to face down Newcomb. So let's go back to action and once again then. Well, Newcomb just trying to keep the Braves quiet, and then he'll hope for Brooklyn to come alive in the ninth inning. But here in the bottom of the eighth, Joe Adcock tripled in a run in the first inning, and he himself eventually scored. Slide to right and bounced out second to first. So Adcock has not been pulling Newcomb. Instead, he's been going the opposite way towards right. Adcock, one for three. Newcomb staring in to get his side. Now the big right-hander goes to work. Comes to the plate and misses outside. Ball one. So Newcomb trying to keep the ball away from Adcock. And Adcock hitting it where it's pitched. Triple to right. Slide to right. Bounced out to Gilliam. Newcomb back with a 1-0 serve. A change-up is hit down to short. Reese up with that cleanly. Straightens up now and throws him out. One up, one away. Chuck Tanner, the left fielder for Milwaukee. Got the dribble single, which got over the second run in the first inning. Bounced out second to first and walked. Chuck, one for two. Newcomb ready and comes to him with a change and a comebacker by the mound. Reese over is up with it right near the bag at second and throws him out. Newcomb made a barehanded stab at the ball and went right over the mound. He missed it, but Pee Wee was backing up. Two down in the eighth inning, and the batter, Johnny Logan, has fly to right, single to left, and hit into a fourth play. 
His fourth play was when he tried to bunt in the sixth inning, and Hodges whirled and threw a strike to Reese. Two out, last of the eighth, three to Milwaukee. Newcomb winds and delivers. Change up, and Logan way out in front of it, 0 1. If you're not keeping score and you'd like to know the batters for Brooklyn in the ninth inning, they'll send up Reese, Snyder, and Perillo. Newcomb double pumping on Johnny Logan. The strike one serve, another change up that balloons in there for a strike on two. Staring in. Don double pumping again. Now the strike two pitch to Johnny Logan. High ball one. One and two. Campanello wigwags the sign out. Newcomb has the one that he wants. The one and two pitch is just low. Ball two. Two and two. Oh, Deuce is wild in the eighth inning. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Milwaukee three, Brooklyn two. Newcomb delivers two and two to Logan, who swings, a bouncer is slowly up along third, and trickles foul. Zimmer over there to make sure it doesn't come back into play. So Logan will hit again with the count two and two. Remember, airtime tomorrow, 225. Don Drysdale and Gene Conley. Drysdale will be pitching with three stitches just above his right kneecap. He got that in a collision, if you remember, back at Ebbets Field with Charlie Neal, who was playing third. Charlie inadvertently stepping on him and spiking him. Logan waiting at the plate. Two balls and two strikes. Campanella settles low back of the plate, hangs out a sign. Newcomb still staring in. Now picks off the one that he wants, and he's ready. The 2-2 pitch to Logan. Soft curve, squirted away foul. Right off the end of the bat over to the Brave dugout, where Joe Taylor, the clubhouse man, is there to grab it. Newcomb ready. Logan waiting. The 2-2 pitch by Newcomb. Fastball cut on in line to center. Snyder starts to go in and holds on and grabs it above his cap for the out. A low line drive that began to take off. So Newcomb has retired the last eight men since Bruton's triple, but at the end of eight innings, Milwaukee three and Brooklyn two. Before we find out about Messrs. Reese, Snyder, Perillo, and the Brooklyn cause in the ninth inning, let's listen to Jerry. Well, Benny, you know, it's not very often that philosophy and baseball go together, but Mr. Gil Hodges has managed to combine the two. Okay, Gil. Smokers everywhere find that Lucky tastes better, and for good reason. Luckies are made of fine, mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. So friends do as Gil says, and light up a Lucky. You say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoke. Well, we get set to go in the ninth inning with Reese, Snyder, and Prilla coming on here. Last stand for the Dodgers. Milwaukee leads 3-2, to two, so back to the action, and once again, here's Vim. Well, in a tough ball game like this, manager Fred Haney has now gone to a defensive man. Frank Torrey takes over at first base, and Joe Adcock gives way. In the Milwaukee bullpen, left-hander Juan Pizarro loosening up in the event that Snyder comes to the plate. Right-hander Bob Trowbridge. So here we go in the ninth. Reese, Snyder, and Perillo. Reese has walked twice, sacrificed, and got on on an arrow. Ernie Johnson, in relief of Bob Buell, trying to save this one for Buell. 3-2 Braves in the ninth. 
Johnson winds, Reese waits, and takes the strike on one. Eddie Matthews tight to the bag at third. Curveball is cut on as a high pop-up. Matthews coming down in foul ground. Is under it, waiting, and takes it. One out. Duke Snyder has flied to center, struck out, flied to left, and hit into a double play. It's been a long evening for him. Duke 0 for 4. stepping in. Again, Matthews just off the edge of the infield grass now as Johnson goes to work. Ernie ready and delivers. Snyder rams one into right field for a base hit. So the Dodgers are still alive. Snyder getting a base hit goes one for five in the evening. And with one out, that will bring up Carl Perillo. That is the first hit off Ernie Johnson since he came on with two out in the seventh inning. Juan Pizarro, the left-hander. And the right-hander, Bob Trowbridge, in the bullpen. Off Rillo tonight, lined to center, single to center, walked and doubled. He is two for three and scored a run. His double drove in a run. taking his time before he gets settled in. Ernie Johnson, meanwhile, looking at his spikes out there in the mound. One out, Snyder at first base. Frank Torrey holding him on. Ninth inning, 3-2 Milwaukee. Johnson checking signs. Del Rice wigwagging them out to him. Ernie ready and delivers. Perillo takes the slow curve down low. Ball one. Pizarro heating up in a hurry as you look into the lineup in the event that Amrose would come up in a tough spot. Perhaps they bring the left-hander to pitch to him. Trowbridge getting ready for any and all certainty. The 1-0 pitch. Trello swings and fouls you back out of play. 1-1. One one. Milwaukee, three runs on seven hits and two errors. Brooklyn, two runs, six hits and no errors. The Brooklyn story... Has been one of frustration in the left on base department. They've left 11. Snyder inching off first. Johnson comes set and the 1 1 pitch. Fellow swings and fouls it at the plate. Backlash of his swing dribbles it up towards first. 1 and 2. Johnson again pays the rosin bag a visit, just fussing around out there, as he'll always do. Flips his glove and rubs up the ball. Now Ernie comes set. The one and two pitch to Frollo. Cut on a hot one and grabbed backhanded by Logan. He goes to O'Connell, back to Torrey, the double play. So the Dodgers, frustrated all evening long, have Frollo ram what appears to be a base hit. Johnny Logan backhanded it, and they got the double play, 6-4-3. to four to three. Another 1,000 free luckies to the Veterans Hospital in East Orange, New Jersey, and they pull the curtain down on Brooklyn, and the Braves win it 3-2. to two. Well, that's the ball game. Here are the totals on the ball game tonight. For Milwaukee, winning three runs, seven hits, two errors, and six men left on. And for the Dodgers, two runs, six hits, no errors, and 11 men left on. The winning pitcher, Bob Fields, who now has a 2-1 record on the year. The loser was Don Newcomb, who dropped a tough one, and now has a record of 2-3 and three on the year.